Hello and a warm welcome to Toledo, Ohio for the Pro Medica Rock the River event. And we are head over heels to bring you round two of the 2019 NGK F1 Power Boat Series. Here we go, they're underway. The 70 and Gaspar with a nice jump, as well as the 34. The Okeechobee native of Jeff Reno, and look at him coming 10 wide across the middle of the Maumee River, sliding through the commitment movies, down the back straightaway. They're gonna come down turns three and four across the start finish line, and that's gonna start lap one here in this qualifying group A heat two. Oh, Gaspar takes a face full of water. There comes the 93 of RJ West. The Mantica, California native, Built a boat, brand new, first race in that all composite. Composite craft, Formula One hull, completely certified to race Formula One racing anywhere across the world. And he has got that thing dialed in in round one. He ended up on the podium trying to get another podium finish here. But look at our defending champion. He takes qualifying very seriously. And the young man out of Riverview, Florida, the 20 of Ashton Rinker, has got it dancing. Down the back straightaway, worked his way all the way out from into 10th. And he is doing really well here in the early stages of the second qualifying heat in Group A. You see the 34 of Reno out, out front with a 93 of RJ West right on his tail, nipping on the outside. Well, West goes wide to the outside. They go deck to deck, down the back straightaway. Clockner medals 34 of Reno on the inside. Looks like he just does not have enough top end speed. And the 93 of West drag races him down to the corner, goes wide to the outside. And it puts it on its tail. Look at him crabbing it out of turn number four. Woo-hoo! He's got it flying high wide and dancing. Down the front straightaway. We've got a new leader here in the Group A qualifying heat number two. That is the number 93 of RJ West. Then the 34 of Jeff Reno behind him. And the 20 of Ashton Rinker all the way up to third place here in uh, the early stages of heat number two in Group A of qualifying. Then the 17 of Dylan Anderson working his way up there as well. Looks like uh, the Jeff 74 of Reno uh, is slowly dropping down, just a lot of punch off the dock, but just can't find that top end speed in that Clockner Metal Siebel design hull. Uh, and boy, nobody's had an answer for the 20 of Ashton Rinker. They didn't have it for him last year. They didn't definitely didn't have it in round one. But boy, look at the 93 of West. He has got that thing absolutely on the limit down the front straight away. And then you see there's the 34 of Reno now holding into third. The 20 of Ashton Rinker now up into second. I think very shortly here, you are going to see a deck-to-deck, side-by-side battle between the 93 of West and the 20 of Rinker. We're just going to have to wait and see how that goes. Boy, he just really loves to air that brand new boat out. That is an all-composite carbon fiber boat. Very light, very strong, and as you can see, very, very fast. The Rinker Boat World number 20 of Ashton Rinker biding his time, trying to find that perfect spot. You can see spectators on either end of the race course enjoying a uh, in-your-face type of view there as they enjoy this beautiful high 80s day and uh, beautiful Saturday here in the upper Midwest on the shores of the Maumee River. Downtown Toledo, Ohio here qualifying in round two of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. The 93 of West had some steering issues yesterday, very limited steering, had to shut the boat down, uh, didn't really do all that well in qualifying in the first heat, uh, but doing really well here in heat number two. The 93 of West has got it out front. Then it's the uh, number 20 of Ashton Rinker, followed by, looks like the number 34 of Jeff Reno, possibly uh, the number 17 of Dylan Anderson and the 85 of Mike Mackis are working their way up here. Mackis has uh, done a really great job. He's a rookie last year, had some troubles, got into a couple accidents, not his fault, but really seen a lot of good quality movement up the leaderboard by the 85 of Macus, but they're all trying to catch the man out in front. The hashtag not a rookie, definitely not a rookie. 30 years under his belt, multiple classes in Tunnel Hall and stock outboard racing, but this is his first year running with the NGK series and in the Formula One class, so he's got the rookie on the tail of that Mercury motor cowling. But uh, as we joke uh, in the pits on a regular basis that it is hashtag not a rookie. There's that lone Yamaha VMAX powered Formula One boat. That's the 17 of Dylan Anderson, second generation Anderson racing behind uh, the wheel of that VMAX powered Formula One tunnel hull. His father uh, still got some work to do on his boat, but uh, he was the first man to introduce Yamaha into Formula One powerboat racing, and he's looking to bring it back here in 2019. Our leader, the number 93 of RJ West, the Mantica, California native, running for CSR, Chuck Skelton Racing and Composite Craft. 
has got it really dialed in. He got this, clearly got the steering issue fixed. You see he goes by the man who started on the pole, but is still having a bit of a rough time here in qualifying. That's the number 70 of Jude Gaspard. You know, we could, these guys couldn't get all these boats running without the great folks at Snap-on Tools. They offer a broad array of productivity solutions that make work easier, including tools, equipment, and diagnostic systems. And you know who's got it diagnosed here? Diagnosing his way all the way to the checkered flag is hopefully the 93 of RJ West. That gives him those points that he's going to need to claw his way back from that rough qualifying heat yesterday and get himself as close to that pole position for our main event later on this afternoon at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Oh, now look, he's trying to get by the number 40. That's the number, the, the young man out of Texas running for Nashville Marine of Austin Cheatham. Austin uh, struggling to find the prop. Uh, for those of you not familiar with tunnel belt racing, we don't have gears, we don't have transmissions. The Really the big difference is how you move the motor up and down and in and out, as well as that prop selection, how rough or smooth the water is. There you see the 20 a rinker go by the 40 a Cheatham and talking to Austin earlier this morning in the pits, working on the boat. They just can't find the prop yet that really uh, runs well with their package here on the Maumee River. You see there the 85 Amicus and the 24 Clover construction of Spencer Love comes spinning down the front straightaway, bending around, going down into turns one and two. But our leader, the 93 of West, he was able to get out in front on lap two and he's been making it his business to stay there the rest of this qualifying heat. Just about the halfway mark here, the opening or the second qualifying heat here in Group A, the 93 of RJ West out in front, then the 20 of Ashton Rinker. Now it looks like the 93 of West trying to put another boat, boat a lap down. Uh, very surprising, the 24 of Spencer Love in a brand new Hoffman composite hull built by Rick Hoffman out in California. Well, it looks like the 93 of West there lost its rear cowling. Oh boy, that's gonna, could change the aerodynamics of that Formula One composite craft tunnel hull and make it a little bit more squirrely out there. That could be exactly what the 20 of Ashton Rinker was looking for to try to get around him here in the late, as we are past the halfway point here in qualifying heat number two for group A. Again, half the field here, half the field in the other one. You can see Rinker trying to go wide to the outside, get some clean water. The 93 of West is now running with no rear cowling, no number. Uh, it's going to be tricky for him. Hopefully he's got a number painted on the bottom there uh, as it might be, incur a technical penalty without anybody having to know his number. Thankfully, yours truly, the noise, noise of the North, uh, knows RJ quite well with the 93 that used to be on the side of that composite craft Formula One. Mercury powered. On the back of that 17-foot-long tunnel hall, there you see the 93 go by the 85 of Macus. Maybe not as good of a day, a morning, a start to the day today as Macus had yesterday. As we go down the back down the front straightaway, we are winding down the laps here in this second qualifying heat in Group Number A. It's all R.J. West. Then it's the 20 of Ashton Rinker. Those two really separated themselves from the rest of the field here in Group A qualifying heat number two. And uh, boy, it, this guy right here, I think, is going to turn a lot of heads. Very surprised that people didn't expect him to end up on the podium. And when he did, I wasn't surprised. And a lot of my cohorts that I uh, that I, I work with were not surprised at all. But a lot of viewers out there were very surprised that the 93 of RJ West got onto the podium in opening round in Port Neches, Texas, just uh, about a couple of months ago. Um, and that did him a world of good. He's got a lot of points coming into this weekend. And I think you're going to see him, along with the 20 of Rinker and a couple other guys you're going to see in qualifying Group B, have a slugfest later on this afternoon at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time here for the Formula One main event here at the round two of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships here in 2019 on the Maumee River in downtown Toledo, Ohio. Rock the River 2019 brought to you by the great folks at Prometica and iHeartRadio. Can't thank those uh, great companies enough here, the local iHeartRadio affiliates in the T greater Toledo area, as well as ProMedica Health Systems. Uh, ProMedica doing a lot to not only bring high quality health care to the greater Toledo and area and all throughout Ohio, but also doing a ton to help revitalize downtown Toledo. Uh, when I got here early yesterday morning, didn't really know what to expect, and what a phenomenally beautiful downtown. A ton of work has been put in to renovate this, uh, you know, this old river town that's had millions and millions of pounds of steel and all other goods shipped up and down the Maumee River uh, you know for over the last hundred years really revitalizing downtown Toledo and we're glad that we get to be a part of it here at the NGK Formula One Power Boat Championships. The 93 of West still keeping the 20 of Rinker on his outside hip there looks like as they go down through turns one and two and down the back straightaway 
Man, he's just got that thing dialed in so tight, running it right on the limit, right on the edge, knowing that he's going to have to do that not only in Heat 2, but in our Heat 3, as well as the main event later on. It looks like that. We might have wrapped it up there. Either that or the 20 of Rinker might have something gone on. It looks like the Rinker might be down. I don't know what happened there with the 20 of Ashton Rinker. We're going to have to find out. Um, but something got on there, either that or, or the 93 of West took the checkered flag. And the 15 of Tim Kraft on the pole there with a solid jump there running for Hondros College, U.S. Utility. And Upside Brewing, the great folks here at Upside Brewing locally in Toledo, Ohio. But boy, look at the Jeremiah get out of my way Mayo running for J.H. Performance Votes in that number eight. Red, white, and blue, Patriotic Seabold came screaming off the dock. He's way out in front now. Then that's the 52, the other half of the Rinker Racing Team. The 52 of Chris Rinker, followed by the 62 of Fairchild. Here comes the crystal clear, the Canuck from north of the border, the number 94 of Rusty Wyatt. So Kraft started on the pole, but uh, immediately got overtaken by the number eight of Mayo. Then a 52 of Rinker, followed by the 62 of Chris Fairchild, running for Lottery.com. Uh, don't forget to check out Lottery.com. Get all your Powerball, Mega Millions, all right from Lottery.com. Download right onto your phone. You don't have to go to the gas station to get your lottery tickets anymore. But right now, it's all about JH Performance Boats. And the young man who's a rookie in 2018, he was your series champion in Formula Lights in 2017, made the jump up in 2018, did fairly well in round one up until about four laps remaining in the final when he barrel rolled down in turn number four, causing the end of our opening round. Uh, he got wet, which is no surprise. Uh, most boat, uh, boat racers and Formula One drivers will tell you that uh, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you go over. Well, he got that out of the way, and he's got it dialed in and dancing now, coming out of four. But in his rearview mirrors, he's got the KG veteran, the surgeon on the water, the Lottery.com sponsor, number 62 of Fairchild. Look at that all composite. Evolution Hall, built by Lynn Simberger, God rest his soul, uh, and Chris uh, doing it, that hull, all the justice in the world as he ran it well yesterday outside of a little goof up on the final lap, uh, but finished second in the qualifying heat one. Had to start from second to last off the dock, and he's all the way up to second position here in Group B qualifying heat number two. The Ada Mayo out front, slide it wide to the outside, pushing the 62 of Fairchild through the spray, forcing him to cross that way, scrub speed. What uh, the difference between car racing where you'll see them go bumper to bumper and really tuck up right one another. You can't do that in powerboat racing. These propellers churn up the water and they infuse oxygen bubbles into that water. Well, what that oxygen does is those bubbles uh, decrease the amount of torque that the propeller can create within the water. Well, that uh, the propeller on a performance uh, Formula One tunnel hall is just like the four high performance tires on a race car. So if that thing's not getting all the grip that it needs, you're gonna lose performance, just like if you're not getting the grip out of a set of old worn tires on your race car. So the Ada Mayo doing a good job of moving in and out along the course, really kind of scrubbing up all lanes to keep the KG veteran, the man out of Paw Paw, Illinois, the 62 lottery.com of Chris Fairchild in his rear view mirror. And he's gotta do that for probably a good solid another 12 to 13 more laps, which is going to be a tall order for our young rookie. The real question is, is he going to be able to do it? See, there's the uh, 15 of Kraft and the 4 of Wesley Cheatham, followed by the 191 of Jake Alcama, the 71 of Jimmy Kerr, and the 35 uh, racing for Clopadlo Racing this weekend. That is the number, th that is Mr. Bobby Briggs. But uh, they're all trying to chase the 8 of Mayo. Get out the number eight of Jeremiah. Get out of my way, Mayo. And he's got his hands full with that demand right there and running for lottery.com, the 62 of Fairchild. You know, just amazing the skill set that uh, Chris brings to the water week in, week in and week out here on the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. He's just so precise and so calculated with everything that he does. Uh, no surprise that he was on the podium in round one. Don't be surprised to see the 62 of Fairchild on the podium in round two. But to do that and give himself the best shot, he's got to somehow get away, get away, get around the number eight of Mayo. And I got to say, the young man uh, out of Houston, Texas, is doing a really, really good job of keeping the 62 Fairchild at bay. They're the 52 of Chris Rinker. Um, completely had to rebuild one half of that boat after an early testing accident. Did middle of the pack, you know, seventh, eighth or so there in round one. Um, 
pretty solid performance, and we've seen that that level of skill climb race over race with the 52 of Chris Rinker, part of the dominant Rinker Racing family that has multiple national and world titles under their belt, uh, from John Rinker, the patriarch of the overall family, to Terry Rinker, your multi-time Formula One champion, raced all over the world, to both Ashton, our reigning champion here in 2018, and now Chris Rinker fully into that racing family's Formula One tradition and doing pretty well here in his rookie season in 2019. You can see it's Mayo, then Fairchild, then Rinker, followed behind him in fourth. That's the number nine of Johnny Fleming. And there you see the 35 of Bobby Briggs. Uh, just really new to that boat, joining the Clopadlo Racing Team here in 2019. Just really getting used to that boat. Unfortunately, they weren't able to have their second boat ready uh, for round two. Hoping to have that ready for round three, which is going to be from Bay City, Michigan, July 12th through the 14th. So mark your calendars. We're going to be giving you all live racing action there as well at round three in Bay City. But right now, we're on the shores of the Maumee River, downtown Toledo, Ohio, at Rock the River 2019, presented by Prometica and iHeartRadio. The 8 of Mayo starting to get into some of those lap traffic. You see everybody's bunched back up again. This is going to be real tricky for this young gun out in the lead here in qualifying heat number two for group B. As you see, he's getting uh, working his way up to try to catch the 71 of Jimmy Kerr. The 71 of Kerr running for races in Hampton Inn and Suites out of La Pere, Michigan. Um, new to us here in 2019 on the NGK series. We've got a lot of rookies that have moved up from other lower divisions within the OPC class of the American Powerboat Association. But boy, look at Mayo. What a phenomenal run for this young man. Jeremiah, get out of my way, Mayo. Uh, doing a phenomenal job to keep the 62 of Fairchild and the 52 of Rinker at bay. That rounds out your top three here in Group B, but the whole field looks like this. Mayo out front, followed by the 62 of Fairchild, then it's the 52 of Rinker. The 9 of Johnny, Johnny Fleming holding steady in fourth, then the 94 Crystal Clear Wiper Blades of Rusty Wyatt, the four Trinity Excavators of Wesley Cheatham, then it's the 15 of Tim Kraft, then you see there the 191 of Alkama getting them put a lap down by our leader, the 8 of Mayo, and then 9, 10, and 11 go 71 of Jim Kerr, 77 of Mike Quindazzi, a gentleman out of Parker, Arizona, making his way all the way from the desert out here to Ohio, and the 35 of Bobby Briggs. But it is all Jeremiah Mayo, JH Performance boats on the side. You know, JH Performance boats, they are handmade, high quality, shallow water bay boats. Uh, check them out at jhperformance.com. There's Rinker Boat World on the side. Uh, Chris Rinker, the man at the helm of Rinker Boat World, uh, bringing you a vast array of high performance and beautiful pleasure boats uh, in the greater Houston area. A uh, really big name uh, in the greater Houston area for all your boat and pleasure boat needs um, and bringing that title sponsor to the Rinker Racing Team here in 2019. You look at there, the 62 of Fairchild walking it down the front straight away. Here we go, side by side. Fairchild on the outside. The eight of Mayo on the inside. This is what Fairchild was looking for. That back marker, Mayo hammers the door. Fairchild walks it to the outside and says, thank you, young man. I'll see you later as he walks it down the back straight away. And that is what is so dangerous about the KG veteran running for lottery.com. He knows he doesn't have to do it on lap one. He doesn't have to do it on lap four. But as long as he does it, before that checkered flag drops here in the qualifying heat, he waits for that precise moment, drops the hammer, and says, see you later, lead him into the dust, and he's out open a five or six bolt lick lead over the eight of Mayo. This was the one thing that Jeremiah had to overcome, just held him off for a really long time, but just wasn't able to find it on that last lap. Fairchild faked to the inside, so Mayo went inside to protect. Fairchild then jumped to the outside, punched the gas pedal and rocket, like a rocket ship, blew right by the eight of Mayo down the front straightaway. There you see the crystal clear and of Rusty Wyatt running a all composite more built hull built in France shipped over a handful of years ago raced by his, the former driver uh, of the crystal clear racing team uh, now handed the reins to the 94 of Wyatt and he's doing a solid job here uh, and he really came out of the dock like a rocket in round one ended up fourth in the final gained some great points looks like he's got a little bit more that he's got to find here in qualifying before he really has that thing perfectly dialed in for the final. Because at the end of the day, you qualify first, you qualify third, you qualify eighth. It all, it doesn't matter until where you finish when that checker flag drops in our main event. Later on today at 5.30 Central Standard Time here at Rock the River 2019, downtown Toledo, Ohio, brought to you by Promutica. But the NGK Formula One Powerboat Series is brought to you by the great folks at NGK. They are the ignition specialists. They are the world leader in technology, innovation, and world-class quality spark plug design since 1936. 
Here they go as they come roaring off the beach. A great jump there by the Michelob Ultra sponsored 03 the Dust Man of Dustin Terry. Boy, he struggles early in qualifying all year, but he seems to get it together right before the main event in that final qualifying heat. He came out great off the dock, slides it wide to the outside, leaving the lane for the National Marine number 40 of Austin Cheatham. Then we got Cheatham in second there. That's the 85 of Makis, the 17 of Anderson, and the two of Hawkins go side by side, and Hawkins leaves him in his dust. And right behind him, he's got Rinker nipping on his heels. They go side by side down the front straightaway, down into turn number one. We got a doozy here in lap one of this open, this final qualifying heat in Group A. Again, we're gonna split the field in half. Look at him, put it on its tail. The two are racing Tracy Hawkins. Look at the thousands of spectators lining the shores of the Maumee River. Now it's tight to the inside is the number two of Hawkins. Wide to the outside is the 20 of Rinker. Rinker slides it wide to the outside. Now trying to get by the 40 of Cheatham. We've got four bolts within three and a half seconds of one another here in Group A. Final qualifying heat. It's Nashville Marine on the inside. Rinker Boat World on the outside. And the 20 of Ashton Rinker screams it on the outside with a fast lap and get, shuts the door on the 40 of Austin Cheatham. And he went from last up to second already. So our so far, it's the 03 of Dustin Terry out in front with that Michelob Ultra Power 2.5 liter Mercury Formula One tunnel hull out front. Then it's the 20 of Ashton Rinker, followed by the 40 of Cheatham, the two of Hawkins, the 85 of Macus, the 17 of Anderson, the 93 of West, the 24 of Love, the 34 of Reno, and the 70 of Gaspar. But it is the Dustman, Dustin Terry. He took home the Springfield event in 2018 with a solid victory on that five pin, 1.25 mile course. And he's trying to get that second victory here in the NGK F1 series. Oh, look out there, the two a race and Tracy Hawkins almost blew it over going into turn number two. And now we got a drag race down the back straight. And Rinker on the outside. Terry on the inside, 03, V20, Mick Ultra versus Rinker. They go side by side down into turn number four. Terry slides it wide, forcing the 20 to go even further to the outside. Now, can he scrub up that lane? Is they're gonna get side by side? Will the 20 of Rinker be able to out drag race him down the front straightaway? They are right neck and neck as they go down into turn number one. Oh, we got a doozy on our hands as they come out of the north end of the course. The 20 of Rinker wide to the outside. He's now got that top end speed that he has had all season long. He had it all last year, and he just pulls away from the 03 of Dustin Terry. He comes through three out of four, shuts the door, and the man who started last off the dock is now out in front. He's gonna look to run these next 12 to 14 laps out in front and solidify his spot on the pole. Well, that is, is if he can run a better elapsed time than the 62 of Fairchild, who you'll see here in a little bit in qualifying Group B's heat number three. But it is Rinker Boat World like it has been all this year. He won the opening round in Port Neches, Texas. And boy, that, that team just runs like a well-oiled machine. And when you've got multiple decades of experience and multiple world and national championships on your team, as well as your driver is the reigning champion. You've got a wealth of knowledge and a ton of skill behind the wheel. So from the motor all the way to the cockpit, they've got everything absolutely dialed in here again at Rock the River 2019 in Toledo, Ohio, brought to you by ProMedica and iHeartRadio. The NGK series is brought to you by NGK spark plugs and oxygen sensors. They are the ignition specialists. And they are the brand that OEMs choose by name. So don't forget, swing by your local store, whether it's your lawnmower, your go-kart, your ATV, or your pleasure boat. Make sure you're putting NGK spark plugs in your motor. And look at the lead the 20 of Ashton Rinker has built here over just the last couple of laps. We are about eight laps in here of this qualifying heat, and he has got it absolutely screaming. That all yellow Rinker Boat World on the side. Kniff designed hull has seen a lot of checkered flags with multiple different rinker drivers in that cockpit and it's Ashton's turn to try to go back to back. He never went back to back last year in 2018 even though he did win the series championship, but he, he only won two races, but they were very much spread apart from one another. In 2019, he's really trying to put a stamp on this year to let everybody know, hey guys, if you don't stop me, I will win every race. It's a feat that his father achieved for the first time in Formula One powerboat racing history back in the early 2000s. Ashton looking to be the second rinker to win all events on one calendar series. His father did it as a part of the Champ Boat Series. Ashton looking to do it here now as a part of the NGK Formula One powerboat championships. 
see the folks enjoying uh, the nice hot weather here. We're in hot, mid to high 80s, light breeze, an absolutely beautiful day on the shores of the Maumee River here in downtown Toledo, Ohio. Uh, don't forget, for those of you all across Facebook world, next event, we're going to be in Bay City, Michigan, Michigan in middle of July, July 11th through the 13th. We'll be streaming all our races live there, and you're going to see uh, rougher water than you do here uh, with those bigger seawalls and a narrower river. But things are going to get rougher here this afternoon before they get smooth, because in just about an hour and a half or two hours, we're going to be jamming all 21 Formula One drivers together on the course at the same time, and we're going to run the main event dash for cash to crown the champion here at Rock the River 2019 in Toledo. It's so amazing to see how different drivers attack the course and all of them are trying all these different styles. They're going inside, they're going outside, they're trying to trim it wide, they're trying to run it low and really pack that air, but none of them have been able to figure out how to dial that boat in as well as the Rinker Racing team has. Uh, they have done just an, a superb job all of 2018 with it all and here again in 2019 uh, you know i know that uh, ashton is a, a, always loves to give a big shout out to his crew chief james chambers um he is his motor man and, and a guy who does a lot for ashton uh here on the ngk series that you see there that's the number two tuttle enterprises of race and tracy hawkins tracy stuck back in he's actually moved his way all the way up to third um with dustin terry in the second spot and then R.J. West has made his way all the way up into fourth, and then it's the 85 of Macus, the 24 of Spencer Love in sixth, the 40 of Austin Cheatham in seventh, the eighth of, uh, the, in eighth place, we got the 17 of Dylan Anderson, ninth is the 34 of Reno, and unfortunately, the 70 of Juke Espard was a DNS, did not start here in the qualifying heat. I know he lost a prop in the last heat, beat up his gear case pretty bad, hit a log in the water, which happens here on these rivers. And you see, look, like there, the 34 of Jeff Reno is also dead in the water down the back straightaway uh, on the west side of the river. Unfortunate for the gentleman out of Okeechobee, Florida, running for the great folks at Clockner Metals. Uh, but looks like his afternoon might be cut short a little bit. Hopefully he can get that dialed in for our main event later on at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. But it is all Ashton Rinker. There you see the other half of the Rinker Racing team getting ready for qualifying Group B. But uh, there's Rinker now going uh, down the back straightaway. As you're going to see, he's going to pass that 34 of Jeff Reno there as he's just keeping his way on the outer markers of the course, trying to stay out of everybody's way. Uh, a veteran in Formula One powerboat racing uh, and uh, knows that you know, he can't start finish the race if he doesn't start the final, so he's got to make sure he steers clear and doesn't pick up any more damage by staying on the course. But the Rinker, 20 of Rinker, was able to get by the 40 of Cheatham there. As you can see, we've got just about a, a minute and a half left here in this race. We've got 14 laps down, just a couple laps remain uh, in this qualifying Group A, heat number three. It's Ashton Rinker. It has been all Ashton Rinker since about the third lap here. He came from all the way last off the dock, shot like a rocket with that 2.5 liter Mercury outboard on the back and cruised by the 03 of Dustin Terry uh, on the back straight away on about lap three or four. And he's been cruising ever since. I can imagine that James Chambers is on the headset saying, hey, run it easy. You got a big lead. There's the white flag, Jack Schubert, one of our assistant referees, ripping down the white flag, letting them know, go fast and turn left just four more times, young man, and that checkered flag will be yours. And then all he has to do is wait patiently and find out if he is going to have more points than the 62 of Chris Fairchild, who's been the dominant force in qualifying Group B. As he comes out of three and four and crosses the start-finish line for the second time in three qualifying heats, the checkered flag goes to the young man out of Riverview, Florida, running for Rinker Boat World, the number 20 of Ashton Rinker. Drivers, you are under order. He drops the flag and they come roaring off the beach. The 15 and Kraft with a good jump, as well as the four of Cheatham. Cheatham and that Trinity, Cheatham and that Trinity excavators machine with a good jump, as well as the 94 of wide. Look at the 52 of Rinker just getting absolutely doused coming off the dock. And the four of Cheatham going wide to the outside on his outside hip. There's Fleming. Then it's the eight of Mayo. We got seven boats stacked deck to deck. Coming out of turns three and four here as we open lap one of 16 here in this final qualifying heat here on the shores of the Maumee River. The 71 of Kern. Well, look at the 77 of Quindazi. Where did he come? Last off, second to last off the dock and blast like a rocket. But they're all trying to catch the young man running for Trinity Excavators, the number four of Wesley Cheatham. 
Cheatham has been struggling all weekend long, not the right prop, losing RPMs, uh, had to sit out some of uh, his uh, marketing duties for the race team just to try to get that motor fixed. It looks like he might have figured it out, but look, here comes this, the surgeon on the water, the 62 of Fairchild, side by side with the Knight of Fleming and the 8 of Jeremiah Mayo, the Fleming manufacturing machine. They were down 1,000 horsepower today. They had to do some extra hardship testing. Looks like they might have gotten it figured out. But we've got all 11 votes here stacked between a half a lap. Here are the opening few of our final qualifying heat of Group B. So it's the 4 of Cheatham, the 9 of Fleming, the 62 of Fairchild, the 8 of Mayo, the 94 of Wyatt, the 91 of Alcama in 6th. In 7th is Chris Rinker in the 52 boat. The 8th is, is the 15 of Tim Kraft. Looks like he's still chasing gremlins in that upside brewing Hondros College machine. Oh boy, we got a battle going on. Oh, look at the 8 of Mayo. Mayo jumps up into fourth position, overtaking the 9 of Johnny Fleming. What a great run for the young man, the Jeremiah get out of my way, Mayo. Boy, he is a force to be reckoned with here. Defending Formula Lights champion. Oh no, looks like we lost a buoy down there in turn number two. Mr. Fleming or Mr. Wyatt, you are not allowed to do that, sir. That is a one lap penalty. And if the 94 of Wyatt running for crystal clear wiper blades took that penalty, that is gonna be an absolute dagger for his shot to try to move as far up the starting grid as he can for our main event later on today. These great sponsors here at NGK, like CDI Electronics, the recognized leader in marine electronic ignition components for over 30 years, is exactly what allowed all these boats to come roaring off the dock. There's the 94 of Wyatt getting communication from crew chief that he may have dislodged a buoy. He's really gonna have to run that thing hard as we've gone from a three to a four pin course. It looks like that buoy, as you can see, it's starting to float further and further down river, and eventually that thing will be removed from the race course as it is a moving target, but it's Wesley Cheatham still out in front but nipping on his heels is the surgeon on the water, the Paw Paw Illinois native running free lottery.com, and here he goes. He's doing exactly what he knew he needed to do. Nothing short of a checkered flag here in the final qualifying heat was gonna set him up where he needed to be. Look, at here comes Cheatham. He cuts inside because he knows the buoy's been dislodged. Says, hey, Fairchild, what are you doing? Fairchild's like, hey, I'm just going around the buoy, but we can't have two turns in the same corner. That's not how boat racing works. Cheatham takes advantage, knives back to the inside, and regains the lead, but here comes Fairchild again on the outside. Oh, look out, Cheatham! He douses down the 62 of Fairchild. Says, get the heck out of my lane. I'm out in front, and you're not taking it back as they go out of three and four down the front straight away. That all composite evolution built hull, uh, built and designed by the late, great Lynn Sinberger and his longtime crew chief, Mike Farmer, who's now joined the McCullough Racing Team. They built one heck of a boat, and Chris is absolutely tickled to be in that cockpit of that McCullough Racing Machine. And he's now at second. He's got some work to do, and here he comes again. He seems to really have that top end, and now Cheatham's bogged down. Something's wrong with the floor of Cheatham. He goes under power. Fairchild swings it wide to the outside, says, thank you, young man. I'll take that and go cruising down the front straightaway. We got a new leader here in our final qualifying heat, and here's where it's going to get tricky. Because somebody dislodged a buoy and the course just got shorter, will the 62 of Chris Fairchild have a shorter elapsed time? Because remember, Rinker, first, second, first. Fairchild, the first and a second, looking to get his, another first place finish here in the final qualifying heat. That means that they're going to have the exact same amount of points. Then it comes down to elapsed time. So now you know that the crew chief for McCullough Racing is in the ear of the 62 of Chris Fairchild saying, hey man, this is gonna come down to a lapse time. You have gotta drive this thing to the absolute limit. You've gotta push it. We go deck to deck there for third and fourth. And it's the eight of Mayo on the outside. The 94 of Wyatt on the inside as they go down into turns one and two. Wyatt slams the door inside the 90, the eight of Mayo. It says, thank you, young man. You're a rookie. You don't know it yet. You'll learn, but I'm gonna take I'm gonna take that corner and leave you in my dust as he does with crystal clear wiper blades, clearing that windshield and clearing the way for the 94 of Wyatt to scoot his way all the way up into third position. Boy, he's got that all white with blaze orange trim, crystal clear moor design hull. Yes, built in France. That's another all carbon fiber composite boat. Uh, great boat run very well. A lot of teams over in Europe actually, uh, fellow American and running in Formula Two over the World Championships in Kaunas, Lithuania. The eight of Brent Dillard's got a board boat that he's racing this weekend as well. So very popular boat. And Rusty Wyatt looking to uh, uh, do justice that hull here in the round two of the NGK F1 Championships. But they are all trying to catch the KG veteran out of Paw Paw, Illinois. The 62 of Fairchild. Now here comes Wyatt. Wyatt to the outside on Cheatham looking to overtake him up into second place. Will we have a repeat of yesterday? Yesterday, for those of you uh, 
who weren't here in Toledo hanging out with us. The 62 of Fairchild had the lead, got the white flag, and on the final lap, spun out in turn one. Wyatt walked him around the outside, took the checkered flag, said thanks for the gift, Mr. Fairchild. Uh, and now Chris trying to hold him off again, hoping not to give him a second gift this weekend. But now the 94 of Rusty Wyatt, that is, if he does not get penalized for dislodging that buoy. Remember, there was two boats in that corner. The nine of Fleming and the 94 of Wyatt were side by side. I didn't get a good look at who dislodged the buoy. Somebody did, and that means somebody is gonna go down a penalty. There goes Wyatt nipping again, so maybe that's an indicator that that young man really likes to go tight around the course, and he may be the one assess that one lap penalty, which will push him way down the starting grid, uh, not only in this qualifying heat, but also in our main event later on this afternoon. So it's all Chris Fairchild. Now we got 12 laps down, just a handful of laps remaining here in this final qualifying heat in Group B. That's right, we split our field with 21 entries. With all this qualifying, we split the field into two groups, and then we mush them all together for our main event later here this afternoon. 30 plus laps, dash for cash here on the Maumee River to crown the champion around two here coming up at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. But right now, we're getting our final qualifying heat in. Look at that sleek, Steel Gray, Lottery.com, McCullough Racing 62 with the surgeon behind the wheel. He's got it dialed in and dancing, coming through the chicane on the front straightaway, down into turn one and a half. <laughs> now that we're down to one buoy, and now he's just gonna try to put some back markers between himself and the boat sitting in second for now, the 94 of Wyatt, to ensure that he locks up that second checkered flag and hopefully can get himself on the pole and knock off our defending champion in 20 from 2018 and our opening round winner, the number 20 of Ashton Rinker. There's the 77 of Quindazzi, was running really strong after starting second to last off the dock. I don't know what's going on. He just seemed to be losing a little bit of top end there. He cruised by four or five boats, but he has now fallen back all the way to ninth position out of 11. And it looks like the uh, uh, 35 of Boggy, Bobby Briggs is the bottom of the field. 15 of Tim Kraft sitting in 10th. Here's how they look top to bottom. Fairchild first in the 62 boat. Then it's 94 of Wyatt, four of Cheatham, eight of Mayo, 52 of Rinker, nine of Johnny Fleming in sixth. Seventh is 90, 191 of Jake Alkama. Eighth is the 71 of Jimmy Kerr. And then the ninth is Quindazzi, 10th is Tim Graff, and 11th is Bobby, Gr Bobby Briggs. The 62 Fairchild knows he's got just a couple of laps and in the back of his mind, he's gotta be telling himself, do not spin out on the final lap. Do not gift wrap another checkered flag for his Canadian friend north of the border, running for Crystal Clear. Look at Mayo, leaves Rinker in the dust like he's standing still after Rinker closed the gap. Boy, that eight JH performance, he's got a ton of top end. He still struggles a little bit coming in and out of the corners, but the young man really knows how to fly him high, and that's why we call him Jeremiah, get out of my way, Mayo. Here's that white lap, so we got 14 laps down. One lap remain here on this one mile course on the shore of the Miami River. Well, well hopefully we're still in a mile because we're down a turn. We lost a buoy on lap six. Here comes the 62 of Fairchild with thousands and thousands of spectators lining the shores of the Miami River here in downtown Toledo, Ohio for round two of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships here at Rock the River 2019 brought to you by ProMedica. 62 of Fairchild comes out of three and four, walks it down the front straightaway, and now we got a doozy on our hands. Rinker, Fairchild, same finishes in all the heats. Who has the quickest elapsed time? Who got out front first? Who got out front the quickest? And who went around this one mile course here with the least amount of time? That person is gonna end up on the pole later on this afternoon. The lineup for the final end. Rinker, Fairchild, Chris Rinker, Hawkins, Mayo, and RJ West. Then Johnny Fleming, Terry, Rusty Wyatt, Spencer Love, Cheatham, and Anderson rounding out the top 12. And in 13th, it's Makers, then Kerr, Reno, Alkamar, Cheatham, and Gaspar. Trying to get off the back. We're going to find out in just a moment. 20 second drivers, you are under starter. They're off. It's the 20 rinker on the pole. Deck to deck with the 62. Lottery.com and Chris Fairchild. We are going to see an absolute slugfest between those two and the other 19 drivers here in the Formula One class. The 93 of West going wide outside the commitment buoy. There's the 94 duking it out as they swing. 21 drivers through the middle of the course, down the far end. And we're going to come back round one and two. And there goes Fairchild. Fairchild takes off. He gets pulling away from the 52 of Rinker. But it is all the 20 of Ashton Rinker right now. He is out in front and looking to go wire to wire here. 
Right, it looks like we got a wreck out there on the race course. We got a wreck on the race course down in turn number one. We got to find out what happened. And it's the 52 of Chris Rinker. Rinker went over down and looks like, oh boy, that is a bad damage on the side of that 52 Rinker boat world of 52 of Chris Rinker. He's climbing out of the capsule, but the entire left sponson of that Kniff design, all yellow. Rinker Boat World sponsored entry is floating next to the 52 of Chris Rinker, and that's got to be so frustrating. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sorry about that. We had a software failure here, but we're back up and running. The 52 of Rinker, okay, but he's done for the day. And the 20 of Ashton Rinker has got it dialed in and dancing, just like he did in Port Niche. He's trying to go back to back here in 2019 for the first time ever in his Formula One career. The 20 of Ashton Rinker has got it dialed in and dancing. He's got it walking down those back straight away, and he's trying to open up as big a lead as possible over the man right behind him. That's the Lottery.com 62 of Chris Fairchild. You see, now we start getting to those back markers. This is why the 20 of Rinker needed to get as big a lead as possible. You see there the flash of that lottery.com in second position. And then in third position, we've got the number 93 of RJ West, the Manica, California native, is running hard in third. But now as we start to get into some of these back markers, this is going to make it much, much more challenging for the young reigning champion here in the NGK series. And so he knows that he's gonna have to navigate this flawlessly if he wants to keep the 62 of Fairchild behind and in his rear view as we get into this main event. 20 drivers from all across North America here looking to slug it out. Only we had a little bit of attrition here in the opening lap as the 52 of Chris Rinker blew it over coming down the front straight away and snapped the entire left sponsor off of his Rinker Boat World sponsored Kniff Hull. And it is all about, he's left it all up to his teammate to bring home the hardware for Rinker Racing. Rinker goes down into turn number two. Three wide as he goes with a bunch of back markers trying to make it in. There's the, nine, the 62 of Fairchild, then the 93 of RJ West. And he better watch out because sneaking up on his inside is the crystal clear wipers, 94 of Rusty Wyatt. Look at all these Formula One tunnel hulls. 115, 120 miles an hour down the straightaways with these 2.5 liter Mercury. Outboards on the back of these 17 foot long tunnel hulls. The 20 is now looking to get by the 35 of Bobby Griggs and he's sneaking up on the 40 Nashville Marine of Austin Cheatham as well as the 85 rookie of Mike Mackis. Mackis pushing to the outside in that quick silver easy loader trailer sponsored 85 all black pew design hull. Gary Pugh built a lot of great 120s, not nearly as many Formula One boats, but uh, Mankus has really done a great job with that uh, Pugh design Formula One here early on in his Formula One racing career. The 20 of Rinker's got it dialed in and dancing as he walks down the front straightaway. And look at it, here he goes. We got three wide. The 93 of RJ West trying to fight for second. The 62 of Fairchild on the outside. The 93 of West on the inside. West slams the door. And we have got a man who's moved up one spot. He started fourth. He's now third. Excuse me, he then got third. Now he's second. The real question is, is are there enough laps for him to close the gap over our leader, points champion, or points leader and reigning series champion, the number 20 of Ashton Rinker. Rinker's now walking his way through the chicane down the front straight. Look at these thousands of fans lining the shores of the Maumee River here in Toledo, Ohio for round two of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships because NGK, they are the ignition specialists. And he has got an ignited fire under him. That is our leader, the 60, the 20 of Ashton Rinker, but here comes the 62 of Fairchild. Lottery.com on the side, part of a color racing stable of three drivers here in 2019. Trying to do everything he can to get back around the number 93 
of RJ West, who's moved up into second. Here comes Mayo trying to stay on the lead lap as they go down into turns one and two. But look at that. You see that number 93 boat? Here comes wide to the outside. 93 has closed the gap. We've got a three boat length lead between our leader, the number 20 of Ashton Rinker, and the man who's worked his way up all the way to second place and is closing the gap quick. The number 93 of RJ West, the Manica California native, building his own custom boats, the Composite Craft Formula One tunnel hulls, all composite carbon fiber with crash boxes and 3,000 Newton impact safety cell into that tunnel one hull, and he's got it dancing. Man, he has got some serious top end speed as he goes down the straightaway. The trouble with his boat is, is he took on a little bit of water earlier. He had a little bit of a hole, which happens when you build a brand new boat, and he just he had to do some quick repairs, some west system on the inside fronts of that left sponson, and he was able to get it put back together. The real question is, is, is it gonna hold over 30 plus laps here on the shores of the Maumee River? And that's what he's gonna need to have because if he starts taking on water, you're gonna see this gap now where you can see these two drivers and say, oh, look out, Dylan Anderson, going way to the inside of the field, almost running into one of the other competitors out there on the field, that VMAX Yamaha powered Formula One tunnel hull. Uh, got a little squirrely down the front straightaway. That's not the first time the young man out of Nashville, Tennessee, has gotten her a little wide and squirrely coming out down the straightaways. But look at Rinker through turns three and four, back down the front straightaway. He is on a mission to go back to back for the first time in his NGK racing career. He won twice last year, was on the podium in all six events, but he never won back to back. He was your opening round winner in Port Neches, Texas, after he snuck by the 62 of Chris Fairchild, and we got another flair. Looks like we got another wreck on the course. Something happened out there. It looks like we might have uh, dislodged enough buoys where the course was dismantled to the point that it was no longer raceable. So here we go. We got a rolling start. We've got them lined up two by two. So on the insides, Rinker on the outsides, the 93 of West. Then behind them, inside is the 62 of Fairchild. Outsides, the 94 of RJ West. Row three, you're going to have the two of Race and Tracy Hawkins, who looks like he just went dead in the water. The two of Tracy Hawkins just lost power. And we are down another boat here down the front straightaway. And here we go, we're back underway. And they're gonna drag race down the front straightaway. The 93 of West on the outside. The 20 of Rinker going tight to the inside. As they go down into turns one and two, Rinker going the short way around the course. And it looks like the two of Tracy Hawkins got it fired back up, but way back down a whole bunch of laps. Uh, and that's unfortunate for the man from Willis, Texas, running for Tuttle Enterprises as uh, Tracy was not able to get up to his third row spot. Oh, look out there, RJ West. RJ West puts it way up on its tail. He has got it dancing down the front straightaway, but it just doesn't look like he's got the answer right now. That doesn't mean he won't have the answer in three or four laps, but right now, you're gonna see that 20 of Rinker start to open up a little bit more of a lead until we get into some of those back markers. Once we get into there, I think that's where you're gonna see the 93 of West have a bit more of an advantage uh, over the 20 of Rinker. As you can see, Rinker, that's a real light Kniff boat that's got it popped in there, coming through through turns three and four, and it loves the clean water. Once they get into that rough water, it'll be very interesting to see how the 93 of West plans and manages against the 20 of Rinker. Here comes Wyatt. Wyatt goes down to the inside. And we got him up on the podium now. What is going on with the Lottery.com of Chris Fairchild? He ran like a rocket all through qualifying. He started out really well, but over the last 13 laps, you have seen him just continue to get overtaken by some of our other top drivers. He now is in fourth position. What a great move there by the 93, or excuse me, the 94 of Rusty Wyatt down just before turn one. Made a sleek move and slammed it tight to the inside, got by the 62 of Fairchild. And now he's starting to gain ground on the 93 of RJ West. With RJ having to make repairs on that boat, I'm very curious to see if there's any water that is starting to collect in that boat. They sat a long time in the water with the wreck and the buoys being destroyed. And here's gonna come the biggest challenge for our leader, the number 20 of Ashton Rinker. He's got four or five boats all stacked with, together with one another as they go through the chicane down the front straightaway. Bends it down into turns. Look at that, there are five boats just in front of the 20 of Ashton Rinker, and he's got to figure out a way to get in and out of these turns and not be slow enough to allow the 93 to gain ground. Now you see the 93 coming in. She's got about a quarter of a straightaway lead, about half a straightaway lead. The second place goal of the number 18 of RJ West. And now you see the 71 of Jimmy Carter, number 8, and in sweets. GNS asks all the 191 to take out, which right on the one on the left. Notice that a black and red 
Schwartz. Well, look out there, Rinker. He goes way line to the outside. Almost collided with the outside for number 15 of Tim Graham. He down into turns one and two. Almost a disaster. down into turn number one. And uh, boy, I don't know if the 20 Rinker could mentally handle another restart. He's had to fight these guys off twice. He definitely, excuse me, three times with the original start. He doesn't want to have to do it a fourth as we are 17 laps into our main event here on the shores of the Maumee River, downtown Toledo, Ohio. Bobby Briggs doing quite a good job in that Clopadlo Racing Seabull Design Hall for his first time back on the racing series in more than a decade after a pretty rough wreck in Trenton, Michigan in about 03, 04. Uh, but got back in the boat, teamed up with the uh, folks over at Clopadlo Racing out of Gaylord, Michigan. They're gonna put together a package to hopefully be contenders by the end of 2019. You'd see Ranker's all orange safety helmet bouncing around inside that cockpit, strapped in with a six point safety harness. Radio communication in his ear from crew chief James Chambers giving him markers and pointers as he moves his way through these back markers, trying to do everything that he can to hold off the 93 of RJ West. It looks like, wait a minute, did RJ West? RJ West is starting to slow down. What happened to the 93 of West? He's all the way down in eighth. I have a feeling that West system didn't hold. And the 94 of Rusty Wyatt up in second place, the 63 to a Fairchild back on the podium. What a very frustrating as the, as the 93 of RJ West, because he I knew he knew that if there were multiple restarts, he was in jeopardy of taking on water. They did a very quick patch in the front left sponson, the inside sponson that takes all the abuse when these boats make these hard 90 degree left hand turns, turning, pulling four and five Gs. And Rusty's starting to close that gap. As we come up on 20 laps in to this main event, the number 94 of Rusty Wyatt, just like I expected, and we talked about earlier while we were waiting for the restart, that boat will chew up rough water. It loves big, rough water, and he is starting to really dial it in. He's got that gap, which was almost a complete straightaway down to about half a straightaway, as you can see that come down the front stretch. Rinker going down into turn one. 94 of Wyatt already through the chicane. Rinker slides it down into turn one. Now pops it back out of two, up on its tail. Rinker Boat World on the side, trying to bring home back to back. Top spot on the podiums for the man out of Riverview, Florida. There's the 62 of Fairchild. Very odd to see him fall back um, from where he was. Uh, however, this is a rough river with, sea, with cement seawalls on either side. So anything is possible out there when you're getting bashed around inside these Formula One tunnel homes. Rinker now making his way back to the north end of the course, down the back straightaway. Will he be able to hold off Wyatt? He's, this is now his third ch hard charger that's tried to come up to see Wyatt. They're now just getting in and out of three and four. So that gap is closing as he takes the spray from a back marker. It looks like that might be the 77 of Quindazi. No, it's not Quindazi that doused him down there into turns one and two. But he got doused nonetheless, and he's having to weave in and out like a good boxer. He's got to bob, he's got to weave, he's got to find that clean line. The propellers do not like running right behind the wash from one of the boats in front of them. There's too much oxygen in the water, air bubbles, if you will. And those air bubbles do not allow that propeller to really grip and grab the water. Without that propeller grabbing the water, uh, you're gonna see a significant drop off in performance and speed. Kind of like driving your car with four bad tires on it. It's just not fun to do. We're trying to drive your car on a, on a wheelie. You're not gonna have as much control and you're definitely not gonna have as much speed. The 94 of Wyatt is starting to close that gap. 
Oh, look out, Rinker puts it on his tail. He must be feeling some heat from the 94 of Rusty Wyatt as he goes down the front end of the course and into turns three and four. And there is Wyatt nipping on his heels. He's closed that down to about seven boat lengths now. As we get to the late stages here in round two, the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. We are right here in downtown Toledo at the Rock the River 2019, brought to you by ProMedica. And boy, these back markers are posing a challenge. Here's what it's going to come down to. Who can do it better? Can Rinker do it just good enough to hold off the hard-charging 94 of Rusty Wyatt? Or will Wyatt have one more trick up his sleeve and sling that thing out in these final few laps here in this main event and use that to catapult himself to the top spot on the podium? We're going to have to wait and find out here and see what's going to happen. There's the two race and Tracy Hawkins. Something's happened there as well. He started fourth off the start pontoon, and he's mired all the way back. Uh, into six, so he shuffled back a couple of spots. The tw four of Spencer Loves moved his way all the way up to fourth place, which is a pretty solid performance for that Hoffman Hall that they're just trying to dial in. New to the stable at Clover Construction uh, Racing in 2019 and just trying to work those bugs out as they didn't get a whole lot of test time before the start of the season. Rinkers doing everything he can to push it to the limit. On the edge, oh no, looks like there the two of Tracy Hawkins is down. The two of Tracy Hawkins dead in the water. We got a buoy down in turn four and another red flag on the course. Boy, that might that might be it, folks. Uh, we've got limited time here on the waterways. And then you can see the pickle fork missing, dead in the water, and absolutely dejected is the Total Energy Services Total Enterprise sponsor number two of Tracy Hawkins. Well, here we go, lit down by Wyatt. The 94 on the outside hip of our leader series defending champion and points leader for 2019 the 20 of ashton rinker as they go side by side right right underneath our drone there there's the 62 of fairchild and the 24 of love trying to get in his hip pocket there waiting for that green flag and here we go we're underway side by side down into turn number one this could spell disaster for rinker or it could just solidify the skill that that young man has behind the wheel of a formula one powerboat as he goes wide to the outside, look at that gap he's opened up. He is dead determined to make sure I don't care how many restarts you give me. Give me 10, give me 15. Hell, put me at the back of the field. I'll still win this race. He is determined to go back to back in champion in 2019. And he's doing a darn good job here in round two. Because if he wins here, that'll be back to back checkered flags in 2019. The first time in his career here on the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championship Series. It looks like the 62 of Fairchild was able to get up in third and get by the Clover construction number 24 of Spencer Love. And so you go one lap down, four laps remain here on the shores of the Maumee River. There's the 62 of Fairchild with on his outside hip and close and ready to tack is the 24 of Spencer Love, but he doesn't have that many laps. So if he's gonna make a move, he's gonna have to make it quick. And that's the same problem for the 94 of West. You see Rinker out there extending that lead through the chicane, down into turn one. He's already opened up a good solid 10, 15 boat length lead over the crystal clear wiper blades, number 94 of RJ, the 94 of Rusty Wyatt. Wyatt doing everything he can, trying to find that clear line to close that gap, but he's got just a couple of laps left. We've now got three laps remaining here in this Formula One main event. This 40 lap final in this one mile course here on the shores of the Maumee River, downtown Toledo, Ohio, round two. Rock the River 2019 brought to you by ProMedica. And NGK F1 Parvo Championships is brought here by our phenomenal title sponsor, NGK Spark Plugs. They are the only spark plug that OEM engine manufacturers rely on for their consistent power, whether it's your golf cart, your go-kart, your truck, your boat. Everybody should have NGK spark plugs fire in their cylinders and that's what the 20 of Ashton Rinker's doing. He is firing in every single cylinder on the back of that V6. He's got it dialed in. He is dancing down the back straightaway. Just a couple of laps remain for the man who's trying to go back to back for the first time in his career. The 20 of Rinker pushing hard. And here comes the 94 of Rusty Wyatt, but he's got some back markers as they go down to the north end of the course. That's gonna be The 20 of Ashton Rinker down into turn number one. 
through turn two, now making his way back to the north end of the course. And we are on our last lap, so four laps down, one lap remain, two more turns for the man to go back to back for the first time in his career. Can the 20 of Ashton Rinker do it? Yes, he does, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like I missed it there on the back end of it. He was able to cross the start finish line and take home another checkered flag here in 2019 and add another top spot on the podium hardware to that ever growing cabinet. Is anybody surprised? I know I'm not. The young man from Riverview has found a way to do things in that Formula One tunnel boat that nobody else has been able to do throughout all of last year and definitely here into 2019. Confirmation then of the results. Ashton Rinker with 150 points. Rusty Wyatt second. Chris Fairchild third. Spencer Love in fourth place.